ladies and gentlemen, my name is Isaac Christopher Lubago. Welcome to Sue Generis, where we try to contextualize uh, the law and also try to comprehend the legal philosophy. Today, my uh, you know discussion would be premised on the word democracy. For starters, we need to comprehend what democracy means. Now, under Greek mythology, you could comprehend the word democracy coming from the word demo Protest, which comes from two root words. Number one, demos, which means the people or the power of the people, and then protest, which means rule of law. So basically, demo protest or democracy means the power of the people in terms of imposing the rule, right? So fundamentally speaking, we need to understand that democracy, if you are to trace its origin, it comes from it or Greek, like I said. But also, it was adapted at the later state, especially during the so-called what French Revolution, and uh, legal philosophers like people like uh, Montesquieu, people like uh, Jack, uh, uh, you know, Jack uh, Rousseau, people like John Locke, were able to give it a more expanded explanation in terms of what it really meant. Now, for example, in Montes like Montesquieu, Montesquieu actually argued it in what they call the spirit of the law. And he argued and said that democracy would actually have three elements in terms of number one, the three divisions in terms of the three arms of government. It's a proper distinction between what they call separation of power, meaning, for example, the executive, judiciary, and then the legislature. John Locke, on the other hand, argued it in terms of comprehending the rule of the civility of the people. In other words, the power belongs to the people, where it probably comes. This other phrase of uh, uh, solus populi lex esto, which meant that uh, the wealth of the fair people is fundamentally supreme, which obviously we can also add vox populi vox dei, which means the power of the people, uh, you know, the, you know, is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. So you must comprehend and understand these things from the word go as you try to understand and contextualize what democracy in terms of, first of all, the African perspective, but also in terms of the bigger perspective. That is something. So democracy could mean different things in different areas, although the parameters, in my understanding, should actually fundamentally be the same. So when you're arguing democracy, you must contextualize what you are talking about in terms of your discourse of the word democracy. That is something that is fundamentally important. Now, in African perspective, where you could argue and say that the biggest problem that we're having is whether or not there's the possibility of, for example, having a clear separation of power. A clear separation of powers in terms of, for example, the executive, the judiciary, and also what? The legislature. Is it possible or is it a fallacy? That is the debate. Professor Kanyahamba makes this argument and says separation of power is like what? A pot that is seated on three stones. Not so. Okay? That makes a good meal. Admittedly. And I cannot say anything less than that. But you see, when you comprehend that in terms of what we know of democracy in terms of our institution, or in terms of our country, in terms of our nations, then some of the things have to be conceptualized in terms of the nation that we're talking about. In America, for example, the man who popularized the argument of democracy was what? Abraham Lincoln, not so. And Abraham Lincoln made it and said, this argument of democracy meant government of the people, by the people, for the people. All the people meaning that, you know, their aspirations should actually be, you know, paramount. By the people, their desires should be, you know, absolute. For the people, it should be in terms of the welfare of the people. So those are important aspects that we need to argue. Now, the question that you and I have is whether or not these are true things that we really feel in terms of our nation today, for example, or in terms of any nation for that purpose. How many times have we seen nations, for example, in Africa, where people have voted, yes, vehemently, and then at the end of the day, they're toppled? Should we say that's a collapse of democracy? Should we say that this popular vote or populism is something different? Should we say that maybe you know, there was the manipulation in terms of vote tempering and stuff like that? These are questions. So when you're contextualizing the word democracy, you need to place it in terms of the true interpretation of the meaning. Because sometimes the biggest challenge that we have in Africa, particularly, is what they call the argument of the Hebrew syndrome. The Hebrew syndrome, which actually causes nemesis. Now, under Hebrew syndrome, we're talking about the argument of the overdependence of the individual, where they tend to merge the powers of themselves to the detriment of the common people. And that is the challenge that we have on day-to-day -day basis. So even as you argue these things, you must contextualize the word democracy in terms of the true interpretation. So as I said, democracy could mean different aspects, different things 
in terms of different parameters, in terms of different nations. So, in Africa, for example, I could argue in terms of what Professor Makandala one time said, he said, monarchy systems are also a semblance of democracy. In fact, his argument is said the semblance of these monarchy systems in terms of kings, for example, these are stationary bandits or revolving bandits. We could argue that. And they have massive power and they use it to the detriment of the common people. And then they are sub that kind of democracy. We could also argue democracy in terms of what? A theocracy. Yeah, where you know government or institutions are actually premised on what? Religion in terms of governance. So democracy has a very varied interpretation. And contextualizing it or muzzling it or putting it in one frame can be a debate that can go on and on. So for you to comprehend democracy, please come and visit the website at lubogo.org or suggenerationsflowup.com. Once again, my name is Anna Christopher Lubogo. Find our website at lubogo.org and suggenerationsflowup.com. God bless.